you've been searching for information about the health supplement known as quercetin, then you've probably come to the conclusion that there's quite a bit of conflicting information being banded about regarding its effectiveness. The purpose of this video is to clear up those inconsistencies and hopefully give you a clearer, fact-based picture of exactly what quercetin can and can't do. And of course, if it's worth adding to your current anti-aging supplement stack. Quercetin is a flavonoid, or more specifically, a subclass called a flavanol, and it cannot be produced in the human body. It can, however, be found in many foods, with the highest concentrations present in elderberries, onions, and cranberries. Now, in simple terms, it's a plant pigment, yellowish in color, but with some quite remarkable properties. It was first discovered back in 1937 by a Hungarian biochemist who went on to win a Nobel Prize for his research on bioflavonoids and vitamin C. Among its touted benefits are antioxidant, anti-inflammatory and anti-allergy properties, as well as cancer prevention, senolytic, fat loss and cardiovascular benefits. So if that's got your interest, stay tuned and we'll delve a little bit deeper into the reality of those claims, some of which may be a pleasant surprise. But before we do that, I'm just going to mention a recent trend by some to dismiss quercetin as a valuable health supplement, based purely on the fact that it's been shown to possess somewhat weak senolytic properties, especially when compared to the likes of fisetin. Now to me at least, this is at best negligent research. To simply dismiss quercetin based on its senolytic potential while ignoring its many other benefits is not providing the whole picture, nor is it a balanced view of the anti-aging potential of this remarkable substance. Simply dismissing a compound based on the results of a single study, looking at a very specific property of that substance, is shallow research and provides an incomplete information source. One thing I'll always try to provide you with in this channel is a balanced, in-depth review of supplements with the aim of presenting you with easily digestible information that has required a deep dive to attain, not just a superficial browse of a few studies on Google. Anyway. That's my little rant over with, so let's move on to discussing Quercetin's main benefits. At the centre of Quercetin's remarkable properties is undoubtedly its ability to modulate systemic inflammation. Now we know that inflammation is involved in practically every chronic human disease, and indeed many acute ones. So adding Quercetin in order to modulate inflammation is very likely to positively benefit our health. Now, in one significant Korean study, research has proved that quercetin inhibits the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines by blocking the effects of a powerful cellular mediator known as NF-kappa B, which is known to be associated with both cancer and chronic inflammatory health conditions. Quercetin's anti-inflammatory effects are also partly due to its inhibitory effects on several inflammation-producing enzymes, resulting in a decrease in inflammatory mediators such as prostaglandins and leukotrienes. Additionally, quercetin also exerts anti-inflammatory effects by acting as a natural antihistamine. As a result of my research, I'm in absolutely no doubt that quercetin is an effective supplement with regard to reducing the symptoms of a wide range of common human allergies. Not only do we have a mountain of anecdotal evidence, this is solidly backed up by several studies, all confirming quercetin's efficacy with regard to many allergic conditions. These conditions include allergic asthma, allergic rhinitis, atopic dermatitis, hay fever and hives, to name just a few. Quercetin's anti-allergic properties would appear to be characterized by stimulation of the immune system, antiviral activity, inhibition of histamine release through the stabilization of mast cells, and a decrease in pro-inflammatory cytokines. Of particular note is a 2008 animal study where a Korean researcher compared inhaled quercetin head-to-head -head with the prescription asthma drug albuterol. Astonishingly, the inhaled quercetin treatment reduced airway resistance more than the prescription drug. Quercetin increases the body's antioxidant capacity by regulating levels of the body's powerful antioxidant glutathione. This is important because once oxygen-free radicals are generated in the body, the enzyme superoxide dismutase quickly captures O2 and transforms it into H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide. Superoxide dismutase then further catalyzes the decomposition of H2O2 to the non-toxic H2O. However, this reaction essentially requires glutathione as a hydrogen donor. Studies have shown quercetin to possess significant anti-cancer properties, and it does so using multiple mechanisms in order to exert those anti-cancer effects, essentially by modulating dysregulated signaling pathways involving autophagy and apoptosis. 
Quercetin's anti-cancer effects have been studied in various types of cancers, including breast, prostate, lung, colon, and pancreatic cancers, to name only a few. However, more in vivo studies will be beneficial, as the majority of studies have so far focused on in vitro models. Additionally, one interesting property of quercetin is its ability to enhance the sensitivity to chemotherapy drugs, potentially allowing a lower dose to be used for the same effect. Cellular senescence occurs when a cell can no longer divide or function normally. It basically just sits there giving off pro-inflammatory signals, which can negatively impact the functioning of surrounding healthy cells. Senolytic compounds are substances that seek out and destroy senescent cells. Now, since senescent cells are one of the root causes of aging, there's obviously a great deal of interest in finding and quantifying the effectiveness of these compounds. Now, although quercetin does possess senolytic properties, it is a weak senolytic, especially when compared to the top performers such as fisetin. However, I think you'll agree that weak senolytic properties are way better than no senolytic properties. Now, there is one scenario where quercetin did function well as a senolytic, and that's when it was combined with the chemotherapeutic drug dasatinib. When dasatinib was taken alongside quercetin, it was found to clear significantly more senescent cells than dasatinib alone. Of course, I'm not in any way, any way suggesting that this is an appropriate combination for a healthy individual, but it is an interesting effect and might be of great benefit to those already prescribed dasatinib. So to summarize, quercetin is a weak senolytic, and most certainly would not be a good choice if senolytic properties were your only requirement, since other compounds such as fisetin do a much better job. However, quercetin is so much more than just a senolytic compound, and that is its real value. Obesity poses one of the greatest global health threats to date, and this is likely to be the driving force behind scientists exploring quercetin's potential as a means of controlling unwanted fat accumulation. Therapy using compounds targeting different stages of the fat cell life cycle can be beneficial for decreasing body fat volume by inducing apoptosis and by inhibiting fat accumulation. Several studies have found that quercetin is capable of exerting both these effects directly on fat tissue, and as we'll see, those effects may be increased further with the addition of resveratrol. In cultured human fat cells, Quercetin was found to inhibit fat accumulation and suppress the maturation of new fat cells, while simultaneously triggering apoptosis, which is program destruction in existing fat cells. Essentially, quercetin blocks the uptake of glucose from the blood, which deprives fat cells of the raw materials they need to manufacture and accumulate fat molecules. Interestingly, researchers found they could block fat cell production and enhance fat cell death quite dramatically using either quercetin or resveratrol, yet another powerful flavonoid. However, when they used both together, they were able to decrease lipid accumulation in cultured fat cells by nearly 70%, while increasing fat apoptosis by over 300%. The study's researchers are quoted as saying, taken together, our data indicates that combinations of quercetin and resveratrol can exert potential anti-obesity effects by inhibiting differentiation of pre-adipocytes and inducing apoptosis of mature adipocytes. Now, this certainly makes a good case for experimenting by adding both quercetin and resveratrol to your anti-aging stack in order to take advantage of this synergistic effect. There can only be health benefits from either supplement, and if you also experience any noticeable fat loss, then it's a win-win situation. Test tube, animal, and some population-based studies strongly indicate that quercetin may help reduce the risk of atherosclerosis, which is the hardening of the arteries caused by a buildup of plaque that can lead to heart attack or stroke. Quercetin appears to protect against the damage caused by LDL, or bad cholesterol as is often known, and may help to prevent death from heart disease. Studies also show that quercetin supplementation can reduce blood pressure in those with hypertension. Studies have shown quercetin to inhibit the growth of gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, as well as fungi and viruses. Interestingly, quercetin has an antiviral action that inhibits the replication of the common cold virus. One study involving 40 elite cyclists looked at the effects of either taking one gram of quercetin or a placebo every day for three weeks while in intensive training for a race. Only one of the 20 athletes taking quercetin developed a cold in the two weeks following the race, while in the group who had been taking a placebo, 9 out of the 20 developed a cold. 
And while on the subject of athletes, one Quersten study looking at athletic performance measured a 2% increase in human endurance exercise capacity and endurance exercise performance when compared to a placebo. A very small but statistically significant improvement. Quercetin has been shown to possess beneficial properties against the general mechanisms of Alzheimer's disease. In both a variety of in vitro and in vivo models, it protects neuronal cells by reducing oxidative stress and neuroinflammation. Unfortunately, however, in human studies, quercetin's bioavailability and low blood-brain barrier penetrability are limiting factors regarding its efficacy, and more work needs to be done to find solutions to overcome this problem. So would I recommend taking a quercetin supplement? Well, if you're looking to take it purely for its senolytic properties, then my answer would be no. However, if you're looking to take advantage of Quercetin's wide range of other proven benefits, then my answer would be a resounding yes. And should you decide to take your Quercetin with a low daily dose of resveratrol, then you may even experience greater benefits than Quercetin alone can provide. In order to maximize the benefits outlined in this presentation, a daily dosage of around 800 milligrams would be optimal. I personally take one 400 milligram capsule twice daily, split AM and PM. Now I also need to mention that it's extremely important that you always take your quercetin with a source of fat, otherwise it will not be properly absorbed. I prefer to take mine with a meal, however if I don't have time, I simply take it with a handful of walnuts, which just so happen to be the healthiest nut on the planet. They're chock full of antioxidants and cancer preventing compounds, and if you're interested, we just happen to have a couple of videos on the subject explaining all. Finally, on the subject of dosage, most studies have found that the elimination half-life of quercetin can be quite long, which means that taking it daily could potentially build up a little more than just what was consumed that day. For that reason, it makes sense to take one day off taking quercetin each week in order to stabilize any slightly elevated levels. At dosages well over 1000 mg per day, a small percentage of users have reported mild symptoms such as mild headaches, stomach aches or tingling sensations. And at extreme dosages, quercetin is known to have the potential to be damaging to the kidneys. However, at the dosage outlined in this presentation, there are no such risks. It's also important to note that quercetin may enhance the effect of the following drugs, increasing your risk for bleeding. These include warfarin, clopidogrel, also known as Plavix, and aspirin. There are several brands currently offering oral quercetin products. And as with all supplements, price, quality and dosage per capsule can vary considerably. One important point is to make sure that the product you're buying is quercetin dihydrate as this is the most effective form. I personally tested many quercetin products and I've opted for the 400 mg filler free capsules from the aging research company Do Not Age. These are of the very highest quality available and I've provided a link to the product in the video description. Do Not Age have very kindly provided a 10% discount code to viewers of this video, which the company tells me will also work with any product from the range of specialized anti-aging supplements. Many thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this presentation, then perhaps you'd like to subscribe to the channel. You'll have my instant love and gratitude, plus you'll be notified of all future uploads. And if there's any supplements or topics that you'd particularly like me to cover in future videos, then just let me know in the comments section. And as always, take care, be healthy and see you again soon.